How do you go from being such a passionate opponent on such bedrock principles for you, and, and now you guys seem to be pals? It was a debate. <laughs> Not everybody landed punches like you did, though. It I mean, was a debate. <laughs> so you don't mean it. It was a debate that the whole reason, literally, it was a debate. It was called a debate. So you can see there Kamala Harris basically admitting that debates are fake, admitting that politics is just soap opera, drama, and none of it is completely real, right? Like she's pretending to be a pal because why? Because she wants the VP pick. Whereas before she was saying Joe Biden is really bad. Look at the way that he opposed busing. Look at all these genuinely bad things and pointing out legitimate criticisms. Like, look, you don't have to like Kamala Harris to agree that some of the things that she said criticizing Joe Biden were legitimate criticisms. But here she is now trying to pal up to Joe Biden, as Stephen Colbert points out, and what's her response? It was a debate. Of course it's fake. And then it's just as fake, by the way, as that fake laugh there. Yeah, and it's it's almost like it's not even, you know, kind of like comedy news. Like he, he goes to the point of calling her out politically and right. saying, okay, here you said this, but then when, when she reacts, it's just a big joke, right? So it's, you know, it's all just for <laughs> entertainment, but it's like, well, what, why would you even call her out if there's not going to be any substance to it, right? I guess for the laugh, it got the laugh, but I mean, it, you know. I mean, well, well, I, I do wish I wish that Stephen Colbert had pushed her a little bit more on it, you know, like really like really push right. her on that, because that's a real question to me. That's a real, real question, because, you know, the whole thing right now is politicians pretending, 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 playing these fake dramas. But who's the enabler who enables this to happen? It's the media. It's people who don't ask those follow up questions. It's people who don't push and be like, hold on, you were saying this. Now you're saying that what's going on here? But then, you know, the media turns around and enables it. Why? Because of access. Because if they were to push Kamala Harris, if Stephen Colbert were to push Kamala Harris for, for something like that, he's not going to get access to Kamala Harris again. Because, like, like right. it's, at the end of the day, it's a comedy right. news show, right? Like, at right. the end of the day, like, Kamala Harris doesn't, like, she doesn't lose a whole bunch by not going on Stephen Colbert. Right. So, yeah, if Stephen Colbert decided to push, to push her on that, then yeah, he, she would, he would never see her again. And also, by the way, he probably wouldn't see a lot of other Democrats as well. Right. Yeah. And it's not, I wouldn't even call it a comedy news show. It's more just comedy, right? I mean, at least, you know, there's other shows that, and I guess they don't generally call out their guests when their guests are there, but you know, the, it's certainly not as hard hitting as, as some other news shows that at least try to be funny along the way. Well, look, I mean, I, I, that's not to dismiss comedy. I think that there's like a really important role for political comedy. I mean, we've seen it going all the way back to, you know, going all the way back to ancient Greece and, uh, you know, all kinds of great plays out there. So, I mean, there's a long tradition of this stuff. And I think that it is really great and fruitful for uh, democratic discourse, even if it's uh, even if, you know, if we're talking about the Greek plays, some of it may have gotten Socrates killed. But nonetheless, you know, like it, it, it can have a good role. It can have a good place out there. Um but still, I mean, this is this is actually sad, I think, to, to see and to really, you know, when you reflect on it, you know, maybe the first time you saw it, you maybe laughed along with Kamala Harris or you, you know, didn't think it was funny or whatever. But like when you really think about it, Chris, it's actually quite sad. It's yeah. super, super sad to see something like this where she's just ap actively admitting that her political views, the thing that she, the things that she says are fake, right? Like she's actively admitting that when she was criticizing Joe Biden, she didn't really care about those criticisms. Oh, it was a debate. So of course we go hard. But but yeah, at the end of the day, we're really still friends and we do all the, I mean, man, it's, it's, it's genuinely sad. And I think it is a reflection of our politics today. Because for some people, this is going to be their only exposure that really that they've had to her. So they're going to walk away with an exposure to her that really doesn't have much substance to it. Right. There's not much to be gained there. Yeah. Well, I, I, I don't know. I do think that there is like a lot of I do think that there can be substance to comedy because it can help us think through things in a way that think about ideas in a way that we may not have typically thought about it before. I mean, in some sense, like what is comedy, right? Like comedy is an attempt to like deconstruct an idea. Like a lot of people have compared comedy to philosophy for that reason, right? Like comedy is an attempt to deconstruct an idea and bring it back to us in a kind of surprising new light. So I do think that comedy can be a kind of intuition pump to use the phrase from, uh, from Daniel Dennett, although I don't necessarily like that phrase. But anyway, to use that phrase anyway, it can help us think about ideas 
ideas in a new way. And I do think that it is very possibly fruitful um, for politics. Nonetheless, though, if we're talking about VP pick, right, because why is she trying to pal up to, to, Joe, to Joe Biden now? Because she wants the VP pick obviously, right? Which, by the way, Kamala Harris right now running around saying, oh, I'm not even thinking about the VP pick. It's not even anywhere on my mind. But of course it is. That's the first thing she's right. thinking about. She wakes up in the morning, you know, she takes off her little shades. <laughs> ah, VP, VP. She slides into her slippers with her eyes still partially closed. She's imagining herself doing this in the, you know, <laughs> in the VP wing. Uh, you know, right. like she, she's fantasizing about this thing all day. We all know it. But she, of course, runs around pretending like, I'm not even thinking about this. I'm doing my own thing. So, you know, th that's why she's pretending to pal around with Joe Biden, uh, because she wants the VP pick. So let's talk a little bit about VP pick then, uh, Chris. So um, right now we're seeing a lot of names being floated around. You had mentioned to me earlier today, um, and I hadn't seen this, although I did briefly look at uh, an article there that Val Demings is now being considered possibly in Florida. You, you yeah, so I've well? heard her name getting thrown around more lately. Pos part of it is that they, they hope she can be the tipping point to deliver Florida, right? She's got the right demographics that, you know, they're looking for in a VP. And so, you know, that's a name that's being being thrown out there. Yeah. So, I mean, the thing about Val Demings, though, is she was like a cop, basically, the same thing as Kamala Harris. So, right. like, if the if the hope is, well, we're not going to pick Kamala Harris because Kamala Harris has a, hit, uh, you know, a sketchy record when it comes to prosecution, turning around and picking Val Demings, uh, you know, uh, now I'll, I'll say it up front, I don't know as much about Val Demings as I know about Kamala Harris. I'll, I'll admit that up front. But yeah. from what I have seen about her and from the things that I have heard about her, She's a cop just like Kamala. So I don't, you know. Uh, right. Yeah. I'm not, I'm certainly not an expert on Val Deming's background and her performance while she was in uh, law enforcement. I definitely don't, I, I don't have yeah. that. Yeah. I mean, well, well, in the case of Kamala, it really is the case that a lot of people have been very, very critical of her. In fact, she's even had a lot of critical letters written from her from the black community in her own state saying that Kamala Harris isn't all that. Um, and I think that when we talk right. about this, you know, yeah. I, I think, you know, even just like a, a few weeks ago before the George Floyd stuff, um, a, a lot of other names were in play that just aren't in play anymore. You know, we were talking about Gretchen right. Wedemer. We were talking about, um, gosh, I almost uh, I'm blanking on her name. Klobuchar. Uh, yeah. yeah Klo I was blanking on Amy Klobuchar there. Yeah. Klobuchar, she dropped out and Elizabeth Warren. I do think Elizabeth Warren is still in the running, although I don't think that Elizabeth Warren is in the running for a lot of pe reasons that a lot of people think. A lot of people think that, uh, I mean, you can tell me what you think about this, Chris. Um, a lot of people think that the reason Elizabeth Warren is in the running is because she's a progressive and she might be able to win over progressives. Honestly, I think the reason is because Joe Biden actually just likes Elizabeth Warren. Like they have like a history and like they're actually like kind of friends. And, you know, I, I actually do think that that's the real reason why she's even really being considered. And I think that the kind of establishment, um, you know, sort of consultant class is uh, more interested in picking Kamala Harris. Yeah, I mean, the, I'm with you there. Where, um, Elizabeth Warren, you kind of wonder if she's still in the running because it would explain some of the actions that she took, you know, not endorsing Bernie and then waiting so long to even endorse anybody it would make a little sense if she was still trying to play the VP spot. Uh, I guess we'll find out in a couple weeks here. Yeah, we'll have to see. I mean, you know, for instance, when Klobuchar dropped out of the VP running, it was kind of interesting because she was saying, OK, well, I think that we should elevate voices for, you know, a woman of color. It basically allowed her to step down um, out of the race without, you know, being embarrassed when she isn't finally picked or, right. or, 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 or what have you. Um, but of course, implicit in that is that Elizabeth Warren should also step aside, right? Because she's also you know, why that Elizabeth Warren should come forward and do something like that. I actually, I think she might've been asked by that. And she was just like, well, I'm not even thinking about it. So we'll see. Uh, yeah. Same thing, by the right. way, with Elizabeth Warren, right. as with Kamala Harris, she's fascinating. She's fantasizing about it every single morning. Same exact thing. Um, but none, nonetheless, I mean, we'll, we'll just have to see, we'll just have to see again. I think that the reason why Elizabeth Warren is even under consideration is because um, as critical of, of Joe Biden as um, Elizabeth Warren has been, they actually were kind of, you know, they, they actually do have, they, they get along in the same way that, you know, Bernie Sanders and Joe Biden kind of got along and it led to Bernie Sanders not being as critical of, uh, of Joe Biden as he might have been, or as I should say, as he was to, to Hillary Clinton. I think that there was a similar kind of dynamic there when it comes to Joe Biden and, um, 
and Elizabeth Warren. So we'll have to see whether or not that really plays into any of this. Um, but yeah, Kamala Harris fantasizing about VP run. So therefore, everything is politics is just everything in politics is just theater. It's just a game. Uh, and uh, that just leaves us to wonder who are the chess pieces. And it would seem that uh, we are the chess pieces, that we are just the pawns yeah. for them to get power. And so, right. oh, it was a debate. Oh, it's just a game. It's just a theater show. It's really, really sad. All right, Chris, thanks so much for joining us to talk about this one. Go yeah. go all, all of you right now, go and check out his channel. It's Political Perspective. There's a link right now down in the description for you to, you know, you hit that button, read the stuff in the description and press the button right there to go check out his channel. All right. We'll see you all in the next one. Thanks for watching.